Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Hope you had a good week, and again, pray for your week ahead, and just hope you're all doing well. If you would, let's, uh, let's take our hand and we'll turn to page number 40, please. Page number 40. And you can sing it, Are You Washed, or Are You Washed, or however you want to sing it. Page 40. We'll sing the first and last verse, okay? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? <clears throat> Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Well, amen. We're glad that you're here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can come to you in a time of need. And the Lord has just asked you to bless this day. Asked you to bless each thing that is done. Uh, to honor you and to glorify you in all things that we do. And uh, Father, we thank you for the ones that have come, for the ones that have tuned in at home. Lord, we pray that they would be blessed today. And, and uh, Lord, uh, just pray your will will be done. For we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. They can be seated. One announcement that I want to make, and that is uh, Marlia is saying... Uh, telling us to pick up uh, the annual report uh, because you need to look at it. And then not only that, but next Sunday night, uh, not this Sunday night, but the next will be the, uh, will be the annual meeting. So you need to go over that, if you will. And so uh, just let you know that they're there and they're available to you. And so uh, also... Uh, just uh, look at your bulletin. Uh, there's other things I'm sure is going on and it may affect you and, and uh, you might want to uh, be a part of it. And so just uh, look at your bulletin, if you will, and uh, find out various things that are going on. Uh, we want you to pray, if you will, uh, concerning uh, uh, Mary Doble. Uh, she is improving, but she still has uh, quite a ways to go, and so uh, we'd like for you to pray for her. Uh, Blair Dawson, uh, continue praying for her, if you will, starting therapy on the knee, and so uh, uh, just continue pray for the, her as well. And then my copper has a friend, um, Dustin um, Moody. Uh, he's a, a police officer, he was, and he's paralyzed, and he is depressed, so let's, let's pray for him, if you will, and then uh, we've been praying for Marsha Merrick for a while, and, and uh, uh, Tom was telling me uh, on the phone uh, that uh, going to a specialist uh, in the near future, and so hopefully they'll find a solution to it. Uh, uh, the way that uh, he told me, if I understood it correctly, is that her uh, leg is paralyzed and hurting her back, and, and she cannot walk, and so... Uh, she's just uh, uh, getting around in, in a, a wheelchair type thing and, and then of course uh, Brother Tom, uh, he is uh, uh, doing a lot of the work and, and, uh, and so pray for him if you will as well and, and then uh, also pray for Henry Reese and, and uh, uh, 
Sandy, pray for her if you will, and then uh, starting therapy, and so uh, pray for her. I see uh, Becky Summers here, uh, but I need to pray for her. I'm not doing well, and so I just uh, continue praying for her if you will. And then Marlia has three friends that need to be prayed for, and, and so uh, Lord know who they are, and so just keep them in your mind as well. And Jake Clawson is going to be having surgery on the 26th of this month, a teenager, and so I uh, need to pray for him as well in the Clawson family. Uh, also, Jeff Chu's mother is not doing well, and so I uh, pray for her. Oh, she passed away? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. All right, so uh, pray for the two family, if you will, and, and that the Lord's will will be done. And then, of course, uh, as always, our shut-ins that we have in various places. Uh, some are home, some are, have moved to assisted livings and things like that. And so uh, just continue to pray for them, if you will, that the Lord's will will be done. Uh, and also uh, pray for our church. Uh, pray for the leadership of our church and praying uh, for the pastor and, and uh, uh, praying for one another. Uh, we need to pray for one another that uh, I, I, I see a, a, a some growth uh, in our Sunday school and then, of course, in the morning service as well. And, uh, you know, that's a good start, uh, starting off the new year right. And so uh, we'd like for you to continue doing that. And if you're at home, uh, if you at all possible, come and be with us. We'd love to see you and want to fellowship with you of some. And, and, of course, it's always a joy to see people, encouragement uh, to one another, to see uh, the house uh, filled up, full, getting full. And so it's always an encouragement on those uh, type. And then pray for our country, uh, the president and the leadership of our country, uh, praying for the state of Indiana as well. And so uh, there's a lot to be praying for, amen. And so, uh, you know, the military, pray for them as well. And, and the policemen and the uh, first responders and different ones like that. Uh, we are still having a lot of problems in the United States and here in Indiana as well. And so uh, pray for that, if you will. Uh, missionaries, uh, Wednesday night, I read a letter from the great... Uh, McGeorge family in Nairu, and then, of course, uh, you have in your bulletin this morning uh, the Riggs in Zambia and then also the Webbers in Australia. You would want to read those uh, letters, and so just keep the, the missionaries in your mind, and every once in a while in the bulletin, you'll see a whole list of missionaries, and, uh, you know, cut it out and put it somewhere where you can Pray for one, uh, those uh, just maybe in an orderly fashion, take one a uh, couple of a day or whatever and pray for them and that the Lord's will will be done in their life. And so uh, that, uh, that you, we need to pray for them as well. Do we have any new prayer requests in this section here? Anyone? Okay. Uh, Kim? Okay, all right. So she has to go through uh, therapy before surgery. Pray for Kent. Uh, 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 Barb? Okay. Bud? Okay. Pray for him. Anybody else? How about in this section? Yes, Bud? Joanne, we pray for 
her. Barb? Ron Jorgensen, pray for him. Okay. Okay. All right. Ron Jorgensen. Becky? All right. Okay. Pray. Continue praying for the summer daughter. Anybody else? How about in the far section? Yes, Phyllis. Okay. Uh, pray for DG. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else? Unspoken prayer requests. Okay. Let's go. To the Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your amazing love that you have for us and your great concern that you have for each and every one, that even you could, uh, just the hairs of our head are so important. And Lord, uh, we're grateful and thankful for the way that you have watched over us and cared for us. And, and uh, Lord, I, I pray for the ones that, the names have been lifted up, and Lord, all we can do is just uh, lift them up to you and ask that you would do the a work in their hearts and lives, and you would heal their bodies, and, and Lord, uh, we know that uh, you are concerned about each and every one. And Lord, we just pray that your will will be done. We ask you to bless the, the Sunday school lesson this morning and be in the morning service. For we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. What about Dave? Okay, if you would, take your hand. We'll turn to page number 60, please. Page number 60, the way the cross leads home. We'll sing the first and last verse. Page 60. <clears throat> needs go home by the way of the cross no other way but this I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss the way of the cross leads home the way of the cross leads home it is sweet to know that I onward go. All the way of the cross leads home. <coughs> then I bid farewell to the way of the world to walk in it never more. For my Lord says, come and I seek my home. When he waits at the open door, the way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go, the way of the cross leads home. I forgot the offering, and I see them standing back there. Gentlemen, come ahead, if you will. Trying to get back in the groove and doing everything that we used to do, I tell you, it's difficult uh, sometimes uh, doing that. So let's bow for prayer and the offering, ask God to bless it. Brother Jim, lead us, please, sir. Amen. 
And God bless you as you give. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you for reminding me about that as well. Uh, turn in your Bible, if you will, to the book of John. Um, you know, uh, these have been, uh, I, I feel like, an important book uh, of the Bible uh, to uh, have understanding uh, about uh, who Jesus really is. And as I've said before, uh, many times we know about the birth of Christ and, and uh, you know, and all like that, and then we're uh, sort of limited on the other things that we uh, do not know about him, or maybe we've heard uh, bits and pieces about uh, what he's done and things like that and, and what he's accomplished and, and things like that, but we haven't, uh, uh, here we see a, a complete a picture of Jesus Christ as God and the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is so important, in, in especially in the day that we live. And, and it's always been important uh, for the simple reason that there's uh, around the world, uh, you know, uh, uh, many people uh, do not believe in the deity of Christ. Uh, they just simply do not. And, of course, uh, the Jewish people uh, do not believe uh, in the deity of Christ and, and uh, believe that uh, everything that he has said about uh, God and, and being God and things like that, uh, they have uh, just uh, dismissed it and called him a blasphemer and, and uh, untruth and, and things like that. And, and so uh, we... Uh, you know, how would you like to be, and thinking about this this past week, how would you like to be for the very first time to hear what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling the Jewish people? What would your reaction be? And many things that he said uh, that he uh, was equal with God, he has not even performed yet. Although we see in, in, in the first chapter and things like that how that we see the miracle that he per, uh, f performed and, and different things like that, but it was on a limited basis. And so uh, he is telling the people, the Jewish leaders especially, about himself and how that he is equal with God the Father. And of course, we see that, uh, uh, and, and of course, the, the Jewish people uh, just said uh, uh, he uh, uh, raised, uh, you know, raised the man on the Sabbath. He, he was uh, guilty of that, uh, 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 doing against the Sabbath. And, and then uh, he, he's made himself equal with God. And so, you know, and that was true. He is God. And so they were telling the truth there. And so, you know, uh, they, they tried their best. If you look in the other Gospels, uh, and read them, you will see they tried their best to disprove who Jesus Christ really was. And his claims that he has made, they tried everything in the world that they could do to disprove that. And, and you know, uh, this is just a one. And, and of course, uh, you know, there's many references as you go through uh, the book of John to other books of the Gospels as well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
uh, and, and so forth that you see that are intertwined with this gospel as well. And so uh, we see that they, they tried everything they could uh, to disprove uh, who he claimed to be. And so the next thing that you see them doing is persecuting him and uh, they're going to kill him. And eventually they will. They will put him on the cross and there he will die for the sin of the world. But we see that over and over in the gospel story. And so uh, they just could not disprove it. And so they're going to kill him eventually. And, and so if, if you look in uh, verse 19 through verse 20 through, uh, 23, just by way of uh, review a little bit, uh, we see that uh, in these verses of Scripture, uh, he has claimed to be equal with God. And, of course, the first thing you see here is that he claims to be equal with God in works, in the works that were performed. And, of course, over and over, and we've already looked at that, uh, very well, and so we cla he claims to be uh, w equal with the Father in, in the works that he did. And, of course, uh, we see that uh, the, uh, the works that he did was uh, just simply this, uh, that uh, he uh, helped the in intimate man, uh, healed him, and different things like that. And, and so we see that was the work of God that did that, and he... He claimed to be the, uh, the, in works uh, equal with God the Father. And, of course, we find that not only that, but as you go on down through here, uh, you will see that the Bible telling us very clearly, not only in the works, uh, but we see that uh, in the different uh, things that he did. Like he said here uh, in verse 20, The Father loves the Son, and show, showeth him all things that he, he himself does, and he will show him greater works. And so we see here uh, that what Jesus is saying, the Father is going to reveal to me the works that I do. Uh, I'm not doing it by myself. And, of course, you'll see over and over in John chapter 10, uh, chapter 10 and verse 30, where it says, I and my Father are one, and different things like that. And if you, when we go through the, the Gospel of John, keep in mind, always in the back of your mind, that uh, uh, the Son, the Father and the Son are one. They're one. They're together. Uh, they, they, the, what they do, uh, they do together. The same way, the same thing, they do together. Uh, and so we see this uh, over and over in the scriptures in, in the word of God. And then also uh, it says he's going to show him, reveal to him greater works. And of course that will be on down the line that we see that in, in, in verse 20 where it says he loves the father, uh, love, uh, the father loves the son and shows him all things himself does and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. You're going to be uh, uh, astonished at what he is going to be able to do. And then we see also where it says in verse 21, For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son uh, quicketh whom he will. And so here's another claim that uh, Jesus is just simply saying that the Son has the ability as the Father to raise the dead to raise the dead. And so uh, we see that uh, uh, this in the word of God. And then if you look in verse 23, where it says Jesus uh, claims to be uh, equal with God with honor. And, and I, I believe that's probably where we left off uh, last week. And so it says in verse 23 that all men should honor the Son even as they honored the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. And so here we see that Jesus is equal in honor with the Father. And, and you know, here the Jews, uh, they didn't like to hear that uh, because they believed in God. And, 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 and they believed him uh, to be the one God. And here we see that Jesus is claiming to be God. 
and, and he has the same honor. And so uh, you know, even today, uh, there's a lot of people that will say uh, something like this. Uh, yes, I believe there's a God, uh, but as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, he may be a good teacher and all different, you know, different things like that, but they just will not honor him as God Almighty. Uh, they just simply will not do that. And here Jesus is saying, if you, you honor the, the Father or if you honor God, you're going to have to honor the Son, who is Jesus Christ. You will have to do that. And if you don't do that, then you don't honor any. You will not honor any of them. And so uh, we see that in verse 23 that it tells us so clearly about that. And, of course, we, uh, we see in the, in the Word of God here uh, where that uh, J, uh, Jesus claims to be uh, having authority over life. Uh, having authority over life in verse uh, 24. He says, verily, verily. And, of course, we have, uh, we are, uh, have told, been told about uh, taking a particular attention when Jesus said, verily, verily. It's important what he's going to say. I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And so here we uh, see that Jesus claims to have the authority to give life, to give life. And, of course, uh, you find that in verse 24, uh, 25, it just continues that thought, uh, claiming to have authority over over the grave. And, and so it says here in, in verse 24, uh, he says, uh, everyone that heareth my voice and believes on him has sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And so we see that Jesus Christ gives life. And, of course, uh, we see that bit, uh, so clearly in the Word of God. And then he says in verse 25, that word says, Verily, verily. Uh, I say unto you, the hour is come, and now is, when the dead shall uh, hear the voice of the Son of God, and they uh, that hear shall live. And so in, in verse 25, he, he claims to have authority over the grave. He has authority over the grave. Even before his own resurrection, he is making claim uh, that he is equal uh, with, uh, with the Father, uh, having, uh, having uh, the power over death, having power over death. And so here we find there uh, that it says uh, there in verse 25, uh, 25, the hour is come. Now what is he talking about? The hour is come and now is. Well, we see from the word of God how that the Bible telling us very clearly uh, that uh, the the hour is come, is going to be a certain time, is going to be a, <coughs> be, <coughs> be a certain time, excuse me, uh, be a certain time, and then not only that, but it's going to be a special time uh, that this is going to be fulfilled. And then he says, the hour has come, and then he goes on, now is, now is. And he says, uh, it's ready. It can happen at any time. Uh, and so we see that, uh, that the Bible telling us at any, any time that it could happen, uh, when the deaf shall hear the voice of the Son of God, going to hear the voice of the Son of God, and then it says, and they shall hear and live uh, out of the grave. And, of course, there uh, we see that over and over in the Word of God so clearly and that is, is true for that. And then, uh, not only that, but in verse 26, it says, For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. And, oh, by the way, in verse 25, it says, The Son of God. Sort of keep that in your mind, if you will, because it, it'll uh, uh, be something that it may, it, it'll be important later on in the verses that we'll cover, and so keep that in mind. But it says, as the Father has life in, him, in himself, 
so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And so here we find that in verse 26, uh, we see that God has always had life. Always. You know, the question that I've been asked down through the years is this. Where did God come from? Where did God come from? Uh, how, how, how did it ever be that he came in, into existence? Well, here in the Bible says, for the Father has life in himself. In other words, God has always been. There was a, never a time when there's never been a God. The God the Father has always been. And the God the Son has always been. God the Holy Spirit has always been. And of course you'll see uh, in creation how that the three, as one God, uh, uh, created this world, created man, and different things of that nature. And so God has always been, and looking at it maybe from a theological point, where it says a self-existent one, uh, that's what it means. He's self-existent. There never was a time when the, he wasn't, uh, and there'll never be a time when he will not be. He'll always be. And so we see he is the self-existent one and always uh, doing what the, 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 uh, the Lord uh, God would have him do. And, of course, you, you see that so, so clearly here in the Word of God. And then, by the way, it says... The Father has life in himself, and so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. And so, uh, you know, uh, as God, uh, God the Son, uh, he's always been, and he's always had life. But since he has taken upon man, a uh, man born uh, of mankind, and so we see that the Father has given him life giving him life, and of course, it, you know, it's sort of confusing uh, to the point where that you see God the Father and God the Son and, and God the Holy Spirit as one, and then all of a sudden we see that he's born, and then all of these things that God gives to the Son, you think, well, he's always been, uh, been God, and that certainly is true, but he's proving a point here where that we see that he is just simply uh, telling uh, telling them about uh, the, what the Lord has, has done, God has done. And it says there, uh, given to the Son to have life in himself. And so we see here uh, that he has always done that, has always had life uh, within himself. And then in verse 27, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. Uh-oh. Do you see what I'm talking about? We see a name change from the son of God to the son of man. And, and uh, we see there is a reason for that. It says, uh, he has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Well, what is he talking about? What, what, what is he saying here? Uh, he is saying uh, that God the Father will not judge. God the, uh, God the uh, Son will not judge. It's going to be God the, the, uh, the man. The man is going to judge. The one that uh, was virgin born, the one that came into this world, the one that experienced all the things uh, that uh, we, uh, we experience uh, and things like that, he is the one that's going to be judging. It's not going to be uh, you know, just uh, a God and, 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 and things like that, God the Father or God the Son. Uh, it's going to be God the man. The man is going to judge because of everything that he experienced upon this life. When he was born of a virgin, and he was uh, born in a poor family, and, and different things like that, he experienced uh, thirst, he experienced hunger, he experienced everything, 
And as the Bible says, he went through everything that man does without sin, uh, the trying of, of his life and different things like that, tempted as, as a man t- is tempted and yet without sin. But he experienced all of that, uh, that man experienced today. Everything that man has experienced, Jesus Christ has experienced it as well. You know, he could have been born uh, in a mansion and, and things like that and, and uh, different things of that nature. But he experienced what common man experienced upon this earth. And so he will be the one that will judge. Uh, And of course we know from the word of God he is going to be uh, judging and it's going to be from the viewpoint uh, that uh, what he saw in mankind. And the Bible tells us there, execute judgment also because he is the son of man. He is going to execute that judgment. And a little bit later on, we're going to look at uh, the judgment that is going to take uh, place. But look at at verse uh, uh, 28, if you will, where it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is come in which all, uh, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And so here we find uh, that in order for him to execute judgment, the Bible telling us, Uh, You ought not to marvel at this because the hour has come in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Now that's the resurrection of of mankind. Uh, You know, and he's going to uh, say there shall come forth uh, they that have done good unto uh, 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 unto the resurrection of life that they have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And so here we see it says the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear the voice. It doesn't make any difference whether they're going to be the saved or the lost. And and you know, you you get the idea here that there's going to be a general resurrection, which is not true. That is not true. Uh, the, The unsaved is going to be resurrected before the unsaved. There's going to be a time difference. Uh, there, there are different uh, periods of time, and we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, but we find here from, from the Word of God, the, the Bible telling us, uh, it says, shall come forth they that have done good. And, of course, that's the saved people, the ones that have been saved unto the resurrection of life. They're going to enjoy the things. And then it goes on to say, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And so uh, here we we see from the word of God how that there is going to be the resurrection of everyone at a given time. They're not all going to be at the same time, uh, different uh, time periods that they're going to uh, bring forth uh, from the word of God. And of course we know uh, from uh, uh, 1 Corinthians Uh, chapter 15, uh, where we see the resurrection of the uh, the saved. And they're going to come forth. And and they will appear at the uh, judgment seat of Christ one day. And then uh, we see that after after everything takes place, like the the judgment of Satan is cast in the lake of fire and, and different things like that, the different... Uh, things that are going to be taking place at this particular time, and then uh, even going in after the millennium is over. And then the Bible telling us uh, that there's going to be the resurrection of the unsaved, of the unsaved uh, individual. And uh, let's uh, go to Revelation, if you will. I think it's in uh, chapter 21. Uh, Chapter 21, where it talks about the the great white throne of God. It's either in verse, uh, I didn't write it down, uh, and I'm sorry I didn't, but uh, uh, we see that the, the Bible telling us, well, maybe it's in Revelation 22. Uh, look, anyway, we're familiar with it, and, and the Bible telling us at that particular time there's going to be the resurrection of the unsaved at the great white throne 
a, a judgment of God. Every unsaved individual is going to appear before the great white throne, judgment of God. No individual is going to skip that. Unsaved, people say, you know, different things about, well, I won't have to stand, and if I stand before God, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind, and, you know, different things like that. They're not going to be able to open their mouth and things about that. And so here we see uh, the Bible telling us about the great white throne uh, judgment of God. I, look at the, I think it's in chapter 20. Look at chapter 20. Yeah, okay, there it is. Uh, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, for whom the face of the, the earth and the heavens flee away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the small, the great, standing before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the, book, uh, in the books according to their works. And then in verse 13 it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up up the dead, which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And the dead and hell shall be cast, shall, uh, were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's going to be a terrible time. And I don't know, I, I, every time I read that, I, I just think about the, the thousands and thousands of people that are going to be standing, uh, you know, the great people, people that you, you think uh, uh, is, is a great individual and things like that, small people and all like that are going to stand uh, before the, the judgment, uh, uh, the great white throne judgment bar of God. Just think of the millions of people that are going to stand there one day. And God is going to judge them. And it won't be a judging of mercy and grace, but it's going to be based upon righteousness. And it's going to be based upon justice. No mercy will be given to those individuals. No mercy, all we see how that God is going to judge those people. And, of course, uh, you know, we thank God uh, that, uh, you know, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I won't have to face that, but there's a lot of people that certainly will be doing that. And, of course, it's a, it's a real humbling thought, and it's a very uh, sobering thought to hear and uh, let people know that one day, uh, that they're going to uh, unsaved will stand at the great white throne judgment bar of God. I don't know how, how often you think about it, uh, how often it's come to your mind. Uh, I don't know, but we need to be reminded about what things are going to take place for the unsaved uh, people. And one day uh, th that's going to be taking place. The judgment, uh, seat of Christ and uh, and the, judge, uh, the great white throne judgment bar of God. They're going to be at two different times, uh, two different places, uh, and, of course, uh, uh, all like that. But the, the saved is going to stand in judgment, and the unsaved is going to stand in judgment. And, and, of course, they're all together different. The saved is going to stand for their works, what they well, the unsaved will too, as you look in in the uh, what we just read, where it says the books were open, and that's the book of their works. The books are going to be open, and their works, and then we see the book of life, and then after it, when the book of life is open, if their name is not written down there, then certainly they're they're not going. To, uh, they're going to, that'll be the second death for them, and then they'll be cast into the lake of fire, which will be forever and ever. 
individuals. Uh, look, if you will, going back in uh, verse uh, uh, 30, uh, we see that it tells us there, uh, and, and I, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is just, I, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which, which, ha, which have sent me. And, of course, we see that uh, you'll remember back in verse 19, uh, where that it says there, the, uh, where uh, in verse 19 it says this, uh, and then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son, uh, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doth, these also does the, fa- does the Son likewise. And so here in verse 30, it's just similar what he has said back in verse 19 and, and just completing the thought. I can, uh, my, my own self, do nothing. I can do nothing at all. There's nothing I can do. And, and of course, he, the, he was dependent upon the Father. He was doing the Father's will. And the only thing that he could do, as he says here, I hear. I hear what my Father tells me. I hear that. And then he says, I judge. When he tells me, that I'm, I'm the judge, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ju- uh, be a, a, a judging people, uh, then he says, I, I do it. That's, that's my responsibility. And then he goes on to say that my judgment is, is just. His judgment is going to be just. Why? Because it's the Father that told him uh, to do what he is doing. And, and so we see then it says there, uh, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And so we see that it's just a complete uh, circle. He hears what the Father had told him to do, and he, he is the judge. And, of course, he says my judgment is going to be true. And the reason why it's going to be true is because uh, that I, I, I don't seek my own will, but the Father, the Father's will. That's why it's going to be a just a judgment. And, and, then, and, uh, and then, of course, we're getting into something that I believe that we'll be looking at next week more clearly. Uh, but it says there, if I, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. If I bear witness of myself. My witness is not true. We'll look at that next week. Think about it. What is he saying? What, what, is, he, what is he telling the Jewish people? What, what is he telling us today? And to look at that, and I, I believe that uh, you'll see it if you really look at it closely uh, in the verses that will be forthcoming, and and, uh, you will be able to surely understand what has taken place. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Word of God, and Lord, we thank you that we have a, a Savior that is deity, that is God Almighty, and able to do all things and do it well. And I pray that, dear Lord, that we would Be mindful of our Savior, the God of heaven, and all that he has done for us and will do. And Father, we just thank you so much uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ, for God the Father. And Lord, I, I pray your blessing upon the morning service. Lead, guide, and direct our lives as we look into the word of God today. And, and Lord, your will will be done. I ask you to dismiss us now and watch over us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you're dismissed.